In California, a push grows to turn dead trees into biomass energy. As forests in California and the western U.S. are hit by rising numbers of fires and disease outbreaks related to climate change. Some experts argue that using dead and diseased trees to produce biomass energy will help to restore forests and reduce CO2 emissions. Jonathan Kusel owns three pickups and a 45-foot truck for hauling wood chip bins. He operates a wood chip yard and a 35-kilowatt biomass plant that burns dead trees, and he runs a crew marking trees for loggers working in national forests. Those are a lot of blue-collar credentials for a University of California. Berkeley PhD sociologist, known for his documentation of how the decline of the timber industry affects rural communities. What drove Kusel into a side business, logging small and dead trees and burning them in biomass boilers? His fear of fire. In 2007, the 65,000-acre Moonlight Fire blew flaming embers onto his lawn near Taylorsville, California as he readied his family to evacuate. Last September, the Walker Fire scorched 54,614 acres just up the valley from the offices of the Sierra Institute for Community and Environment, the nonprofit research organization Kusel founded in 1993. In that 12 year span, wildfires burned 690 square miles in the northern Sierra Nevada. Drought, a warming climate, and bark beetle infestations have also killed 147 million California trees since 2013. Scientists say these trees are poised to burn in California's next round of megafires, threatening the range with blazes so intense, they will leave some places unable to establish new forests. Kusel, 63, is one of a growing number of citizens and officials anxious to put those trees in their thick undergrowth to use before they ignite large-scale wildfires, pollute the air with choking smoke, and release large amounts of CO2. His institute has invested in logging equipment to supply wood chips to community biomass facilities, which burn them to produce heat and electricity. This is low-value vegetation that would have burned in natural fires a century ago before the U.S. Forest Service began suppressing fire. If we can't figure out what to do with the lowest value material, we will fail at restoring our forests, says a biomass advocate. Along with thinning trees in overcrowded forests, Kusel says, biomass projects help rebuild rural communities by creating jobs, all while preventing the massive carbon emissions released in wildfires. The moonlight fire alone spewed the annual CO2, equivalent of 750,000 gasoline power cars. Biomass projects such as Kusel's are controversial, especially in the southeastern U.S., where states have rushed to convert forests into pellets for export to power plants in Europe. That market opened up after a much-criticized European Union decision to categorize biomass energy as a form of renewable energy. As production has nearly doubled at facilities from Virginia to Florida, large-scale logging has had a major impact on southern forest ecosystems, among the most diverse in the country. More than 35 million acres of natural forests have been lost, local species extinctions doubled between 2002 and 2011, according to the Dogwood Alliance, an environmental organization protecting southern forests. The American Lung Association and numerous health organizations blame biomass burning for a sweeping array of health harms, from asthma to cancer to heart attacks. Kusel and others contend, however, that the West's fire-prone ecosystems make biomass utilization fundamentally different. Kusel's projects utilize dead, diseased, and burned trees, along with the small-diameter green trees that he says overcrowd forests and contribute to fire danger. But where Kussel sees ecosystem benefits, jobs, and cleaner air, some conservationists see overcutting that destroys wildlife habitat, removes carbon-storing trees, and releases even more carbon by burning them. For the climate it's a double whammy, says Shea Wolf, climate science director for the Center for Biological Diversity. The state that has made reducing carbon emissions a top priority is embracing the use of woody debris as part of sweeping policies that include thinning 1 million acres a year of live and dead trees. Kusel and others regard this as a path toward forest resilience and carbon neutrality, a way to reduce the extent and intensity of wildfires while generating electricity. In California, the state with the most biomass power plants, the nearly 70 facilities operating in the early 1990s, dropped to about 24 after government incentives waned. The current enthusiasm began around 2015, when drought-killed trees began transforming Sierra forests from shades of green to bright orange. That was a tipping point, a sober realization that we really do have a forest health issue, says Andrea Tuttle. Former director of the California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection, now CAL FIRE. 
In 2018, California wildfires released 45.5 million metric tons of carbon dioxide, more than half as much as the state's industrial sector emits in a year. Catastrophic fires are completely swamping the types of gains that California is making by regulating tailpipes and all the other good work we've been doing, says Graham Chisholm. Senior policy advisor with the Conservation Strategy Group, a natural resources consulting firm.